People pay money to see me in a 20 by 20 ring. Welcome to another edition of the 20 by 20 Ring Crew. I am your co-host Joe, and I'm here with my partner in crime, Matt. What's going on, Matt? What's going on? Matt is uh, back from uh, a little hiatus, um, just being sick. Um, welcome back, man. Yeah, thanks. It's good to be have some normalcy back in my life. <laughs> Uh, we are one week removed from our preview edition of our new YouTube exclusive, The Following Contest. Seems to have gotten some some pretty decent reviews from our listeners. Um, something new we're trying, something we've always wanted to do with the podcast. Uh, I had a blast. Yeah, as did I. And I'm, I, I'm glad that uh, we got some buzz with that because that's, that's what it's all about. It's about... The listeners out there, this, this is all about you guys getting involved and giving us your fantasy booking as well because that's really the ultimate fandom in anything is who would win in this fight. And here, that's what we're doing. That's, that's, that's in a nutshell, that's what the following contest is all about. It's who would win in this fight and who would win in that fight. And and it's not going to just be just from us. That's, that's what I, I can't stress that enough. Like I, everybody out there listening, you got somewhere along the line, you have a match, at least one match that you would love to have seen. And this is your platform to showcase that. I am so glad this is not a Dragon Ball Z or a DC comics podcast. <laughs> we will, <laughs> we will not have to go through, uh, all that fucking frustration. And I'm ever so thankful for it. Essentially, this is Super Fight, the wrestling edition. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, it's a, it's a pretty cool game where, where you can just sit around and, and make a bunch of BS Yeah, is, Yeah, <laughs> fantasy books, some crazy-ass <laughs> fights. I want my title, by the way. I want my title rematch. We're, we're going to have to hold another event <laughs> sometime soon. I got screwed. Just... <laughs> it's the Illinois screw job. The Illinois screw job. Speaking of our following contest segment, uh, actually news just broke, uh, I want to say, a few days now, a few days ago, where uh, Shawn Michaels kind of came out and basically uh, let the cat out of the bag and said he's he's game for one more match. And uh, he actually listed three three guys he would love to have that match with. For those of you who don't know, uh, Michaels was quoted as saying that he doesn't want to do a long program. He wants it to be a one-and-done kind of a thing, but it has to be done right. Uh, the three guys he mentioned were uh, Mr. Rus- uh, not Mr. Wrestling, I'm sorry, Johnny Wrestling himself, Johnny Gargano, which kind of a surprise to me. Yeah. The phenomenal one himself, AJ Styles, which that, that that's got to be up there with yeah. uh, with a lot of folks. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And the one we actually booked fantasy booked last week on our preview edition of the following contest: teacher versus student, Shawn Michaels versus Brian Danielson, or in this case, I guess it would be Daniel Bryan. <clears throat> it'll be yeah, it'll be a WWE ring, whether, <laughs> whether we like it or not. Ooh. <laughs> well, he's got he's got he's got to do it for his boy, you know. Well, yeah, well, you know, that's this is how it works. But uh, I just goes to show you that Shawn Michaels listens to the show because where else would you have gotten that from? <laughs> <laughs> no, that one right there, that the the Brian Danielson and Shawn Michaels match. It's same thing with the AJ Styles. It's got to be one of those matches that so many people would just be like book this match. You know, if we if we. You know, we did a, a family feud. Survey says like that would be one and two. Those two matches, I think, uh, especially in this day and age, when we look at the WWE, which again is most people are going to grab wrestlers from or superstars from, and put them against you know the ultimate superstar, or at least one of them, 
and Shawn Michaels. It's going to be AJ Styles. It's going to be Bobby Roode. It's going to be, you know, Daniel Bryan, guys like that. So this one right there is, to me, is, is, is a no-brainer. I mean, if you the problem is you only, you only get to pick one. I love Johnny Gargano, but he's out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Just like that, yeah. Sorry. But he's just, it just... It'll be a, it, it would be a good match. I, I I totally see why he would want that match. But as far as big fight, it's it's got to be AJ or it's got to be Dana Bryan. I, I agree with that. I think AJ kind of fits the mold a little bit more right now. But as far as booking a match, if, if you were going to do even a little bit of hype, I, mean, I know he doesn't want to do a long-term thing or anything like that, but... The teacher versus student because it's so well documented. Not many, not many people in the WWE fandom universe know. Well, this guy trained this guy. Um, this is not well documented the way that it should be, in, or the way that it is in other wrestling promotions. But in the case of Daniel Bryan, it's it's well documented that he was trained by Shawn Michaels the day after he graduated high school. So um, that one fits the WWE mold perfectly. And as far as a match, I don't, I have no, I would have no concerns about it whatsoever. Absolutely. Uh, there's one, there's one match, uh, being that we're talking about this whole teacher versus student dynamic between Shawn Michaels and and Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan, however you would like to address him. There's one, there's there's another guy here that often gets overlooked. For, for a variety of reasons, depending on the, the fan that you are. But uh, I'm going to add another one while we're at it. Okay. And this one, this one is, uh, this one's been sitting sitting on my palate for, for quite some time. But uh, it would be teacher versus student, and it would be Shawn Michaels versus the Brian Kendrick. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Kendrick for me is really um, underestimated. Yeah, and, and, I agree. And, and overlooked a lot of times. And I, I know part of that is because of his first run in the WWE, WWF at the time, where he wasn't that established, uh, first of all, as a singles performer. Uh, you know, he was he was more um, tag team based with Paul London. And although they had a pretty, pretty nice run there for a while, um, his attitude was also lackluster and... He just didn't have his head in the game. It was more in his ass uh, sure. than it should have been. But uh, him coming back, um, starting with the with the 205 Live tournament. Yeah, the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah, the Cruiserweight Classic. The, I mean, he has continually impressed me. I think now, the, this, this incarnation of Brian Kendrick would be perfect for a singles match against Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that's that's a guy that's going to get overlooked um, for for so many reasons. Is he even in the WWE anymore? Do you know? You know what? I don't watch Two Hundred Five Live. So yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. That's one of those guys that I stress. I can't stress it enough about why it's so important to to dive outside of WWE and whatever they want to put out there as far as wrestling goes or whatever they want to call it. Because I guarantee you, as you said that, there's, there's there's listeners out there that are WWE only fans, and they are just like this. Turn to cut this guy's mic, like this is stupid. <laughs> and you don't you don't understand the level of performance that Brian Kendrick can put on, and he showed that during the Cruiserweight Classic, and he showed that a little bit during Two Hundred Five Live, but. Then again, just like everything else in WWE, the gimmick got into the way. Uh, I don't think it was a case of the bad attitude this time. I think he definitely learned his lesson. It was definitely a more humble very Brian Kendrick humble, this time yes, around. Very humble. Um, but you saw the gimmick get in the way eventually, and the same thing happens to every single wrestler in the WWE. It, it's it's sink or swim when it comes to that gimmick and. That's kind of where Brian Kendrick falls backwards again because he's not the greatest gimmick wrestler out there. So that's he's one of those guys that will definitely get overlooked, and that that totally makes great sense. And and if if 
if you're booking it from a wrestling fan standpoint, that definitely would sell itself as well. Um, but again, we were talking to in the, in the the realm of the WWE. I I just don't see it, unfortunately. No, that that's a definite. I don't think we'll ever see that match. Um, at, at least uh, in that carnation incarnation. We are watching the New Japan Pro Wrestling Best of the Super Juniors 2018 edition finals, which was uh, June 4th, for those of you who who are interested. We're watching that on the screen right now. <laughs> we just got to see Chris Jericho call uh, Tetsuya Naito a fuckface. <laughs> <laughs> And Naito's responding on the mic. <coughs> Definitely uh, an, another bit of uh, fantasy booking that we're looking forward to happening. This one's actually going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's happening June 9th, ladies and gentlemen. June 9th, uh, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. So, can't wait. Uh, I, I know I'll be. Uh, I'll probably be checking it out uh, as it happens. I plan on... Uh, early bird or late? Early bird, early man. Early bird, okay. Yep. So I I would definitely be watching it on on replay, but uh, it's it's gonna be my uh, my morning ritual here is is watching uh, Dominion. Um, the card's out. The card is is completely out, and it's it's a stacked card. Here's the thing about New Japan Pro Wrestling: they don't have to oversell matches, and that's where professional wrestling seems to not get the credit that it deserves because of the world that we live in in the WWE universe where everything has got to be a, a fucking drama every single time. You know, here it's just, look at the match that was just made earlier this week. And we were talking Tuesday here. Hiroshi Tanahashi, Juice and Thunder Liger, and Rey Mysterio Jr. versus the Bullet Club. Cody, uh, Hangman Page, and Marty Scurll. That right there sold itself. It sold itself right there. I mean, you got Rey Mysterio Jr. coming to New Japan Pro Wrestling, finally. Yeah, finally. After all the injuries have, have subsided and everything like that. We thought we were going to get him versus Juicin. That's not happening well, yet. Uh, that's probably going to be saved for, I'm assuming, San Francisco. Yeah, that that seems to be the, the thought process here. I, I kind of picked that, too. I, I figured they would... They would uh, kind of slowly work him into into this uh, the uh, schedule of things. So I, yeah, it totally makes sense that we would see him, uh, Ray Mysterio versus Jushin Thunder Liger, at their first and maybe only appearance at the Cow Palace, depending off on if it's still there, because that venue is has been has been trying to go by the wayside for for at least the last five years. So we'll we'll see, but uh, yeah. San Francisco, I could see that happening there. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And then you get those two, and then you you, you throw in Hiroshi Tanahashi, who shouldn't need an introduction. Um, you know, he's he's the ace of New Japan. He's the guy that carried that company for so many years, uh, and now it's kind of reaping the benefits of it because he doesn't have to anymore. I think you totally get a different Tanahashi now that he he's. He's that seasoned veteran that kind of gets to reap the benefits of being a seasoned veteran instead of carrying a struggling company on his back. Um, certainly, we're, as we see Kazuchika Okada come out, who has broke finally broken the record, the record longest reign in New Japan. Uh, you know, this as of right now, this is his company. So, it's, yeah. it's Tanahashi doesn't have to be what he used to be, and so you get to see a kind of a, a funner side of him. And then you get, again, you got the Bullet Club who are kind of finally going back to that heel entity where everybody's on board of still doing the heel. Yeah, you still got the, the, the little bit of the, the civil war between Cody and Kenny and who knows what's going on with all that being the elite stuff and Kenny Omega and the box that he was given by the Bucks. Uh, I know you follow that. I, I just get the information from you. So, <laughs> but what you know, as we saw throughout the Best of Super Juniors tournament, is you got that heel faction back. The, well, the well oiled machine is back. You're absolutely right. the The Cody Kenny thing has kind of gone by the wayside. I don't think it's over said and done with 
No, I don't either. No, I don't either. But, uh, yeah, it's it's gone by the wayside for the most part for right now. And and it seems like the boys are back to being uh, um, all for one. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's great to see it back. And the well oil machine is back. And it's great to see, you know, Cody, and, or excuse me, uh, Marty and, uh, and Chase Owens, because Chase Owens is in the ring now. They teamed up together. Uh... Yujiro Takahashi teamed up with Marty during the final night of the uh, Best of Super Juniors, and it's just great to see that. And again, the the heel entities are back, and this is great overall, great. But uh, going back to Dominion, it's a stacked card, man. It's I mean, you got you tag matches galore as you would in any New Japan uh, card, which is not a bad thing. It's never a bad thing. Uh, you got your title matches. Anything stand out to you with the on the undercard? Stay with the undercard for now. You know what? I, I've uh, I have grown to I have grown to sit and and anticipate, like highly anticipate, watching Rapungi 3K. Um, it seems like the longer these two guys are a team, the more fluid they become. Something special about those two guys. Definitely, and uh, I'm I'm liking where they're they're coming from and where they're going. Uh, with or without... Without Rocky? Without Rocky, yeah. Without Rocky Romero. They seem to be uh, doing a hell of a job, and, and they're they're definitely going to have their work cut out for them against um, Desperado and Kanemaru, uh, representing Suzuki-Goon there. But, uh, yeah, for, for right now, that is the opening match on the Dominion card. And it kind of seems to be, uh, with these big cards... That the uh, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles are seem to always be like the first bout, almost always, which which is fine with me. Uh, it's a great way to start the show. The, these these four guys are no strangers. Actually, Suzuki Goon are the ones that took those titles from Rapongi 3K. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if they give Rapongi 3K three title reigns in a year, in half a year actually. Yeah, I was gonna say less than <laughs> less than or around about six months. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. It's gonna be interesting to see if they do that, or but um, either way, it's gonna be that's a really solid match, and that's another one. Again, that was put together on Tuesday, right? So there's your hype right there. There's no, there's no <laughs> needed. You, you put that on the card, and it's like holy shit, that's a great match. I, I think for me, I've been waiting for for Sonata and Evil versus the Bucks. Uh, I've been waiting for that one for quite some time now. Ever since they got booked uh, last month. I want to say, or maybe it was April when it happened, but uh, when uh, when the Bucks challenged Lij for the for the tag titles, this is this is the first time the Bucks are getting a shot at the heavyweight tag titles. They are brand new to the or newer, I should say, to the heavyweight division, and they're going at it with Sonata and Evil, who have been champs since uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, and. I mean, to be fair, they have a lot of title reigns due to Evil's injury, but uh, this this right here is is a really interesting match for me. Really good clash of styles, uh, good hard hitting match. I think is what we're <laughs> gonna see in this one. So that one right there is my standout on the other card. I, I'm 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 all for it too. Uh, I was I was just remarking to Matt here before we went on uh, started recording that uh, Evil's scythe. Seems to getting it seems to be getting bigger and bigger every time I see it. Because everything is evil. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Final Fantasy proportions now with with this fucking weaponry. But um, yeah, I I definitely look forward to that match. Uh, four guys from from two of my favorite factions, <laughs> and they're gonna do it up big, man. There's no fucking doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you see the Bucks taking the taking the titles? Uh, that's the million dollar question, and I I'm gonna say not not a Dominion, but no. Mark, no, I, I'm gonna say no, but I will say 2018 they will easily be champions at some point, and it could happen as as, as soon as like Kazuna Road, you know. So it could happen I, as soon as that. So I'll give knows? you that. I'll give you that. But I wouldn't be shocked. It's, uh, we say that. I'm. It's, I'm not going to be blown away if they if they walk out as, as champs. Uh, they're very well respected in New Japan. Uh, as I mean, 
New Japan since we're talking about New Japan show. Um, and I could totally see them. I mean, they're, we're talking about seven time junior heavyweight tag champs. So uh, you're talking about two guys who have, have done it all in the junior heavyweight division. They're going to bring it all in the heavyweight division. And they also represent the Bullet Club, who are is one of the biggest factions in professional wrestling throughout the entire world. So it would totally make sense to throw the titles on them. I don't see it happening yet, but I t- it totally makes sense that they do. There's nine matches on this card, and six of them are tag team matches. Yeah. I wish I wish we seen more of this in American wrestling. It's such a it's such a lost start, and you know what? I I don't know what it is, and, and maybe maybe some of the listeners can can sound off on this for for me because I hear a lot of complaining when for those who get into Japanese wrestling is oh well, this is tag match tag match tag match tag match, and my response is your point. I I mean. <laughs> I would rather watch tag matches that have a ton of high spots and great wrestling action, hard hitting, back and forth wrestling than a, a ten minute segment on on Tuesday nights or Monday nights. I would rather see the, the give me the wrestling match. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and maybe it's maybe I'm, I mean. I used to think maybe it was because I'm not the big of American style wrestling fans that I thought I was, but it's it's just it's the wrestling fan in me that that says I lo- I love good storytelling I do and I love a good promo who doesn't, but I don't need out of a three hour show I don't need an hour and a half of it if not well, actually usually more than that but I'm just gonna lowball and say an hour and a half of it being promos. And keep in mind, we're talking. We got commercials. We got to throw in there too. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't need all that. I don't need all that shit. You know, I watch plenty of of scripted television as is. I watch wrestling for wrestling. I could be entertained by by watching two guys or four guys or six guys or eight guys or how many guys just go at it and give give it everything. And the thing is too is if you can't tell a story. By your actual wrestling abilities, then you're not good at what you do, anyways. <laughs> you know, I'm watching. I'm watching uh, right now. We got uh, Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada versus Kota Bushi and Chase Owens, and there's no like storyline rivalry here. Yeah, there's it? there's no rhyme or reason for these four guys to be in the ring. No, there's not. But they're going at it. But they're going at it, and they're telling a story. And they're telling a story. I don't need them to actually say, "Hey, this is what we're doing." That's what kills me too about uh, about this whole situation with tag team wrestling uh, these days. You you've got New Japan, and I'm sure other in indie or or non American promotions do this. Mm-hmm. But you get all, you got all these tag matches, and you get a tag match like this one that we're talking about now. You have four guys; they don't normally tag together. You know, there is, some of these guys aren't even in the same stable. Yeah. And you have them tagging together. And a lot of the match is just, a, it's it's like an extended singles match. Yeah. It's whoever's in the ring, it, and, and they're, they're showcasing their talent. Right now it happens to be Will Ospreay and Chase Owens. It's like you're watching that as a singles match. Yep. With the with the only stipulation is sooner or later one of them is going to tag out and someone else is going to come in, but uh, the the entire time that they're in the ring, that's what you're seeing, and, and I don't understand why these matches are such a turnoff to American wrestling fans. Yeah, I don't get it either. You you get to see guys who you normally wouldn't see face one another yeah. for for a variety of reasons. Exactly. Well, you know, not only that too, but we also have you know weight classes here. It doesn't apply in this. Well, it actually does because Will Osprey is a junior heavyweight. But you know, you see that with junior heavyweights and heavyweights, they don't go one on one with each other very often because a lot, a lot of the storylines that they do are based off of titles or tournaments, which again are based off of titles. Yeah. And so, th- therefore, like 
those type of single matches just don't happen. They happen when you, when you do these tag matches, and therefore you can get a Will Ospreay in the ring against a Kota Ibushi. Other than that, you're probably not going to see that. Exactly. So, yeah, just to kind of piggyback what you said there. And and, and again, too, here's the, here's the thing that we talked about on the show with the WWE, you know. And I, I, I don't mean to pick on the WWE, though I don't care if I do or not. But they seem to be the most popular thing, obviously. So, therefore, this is how I get my point across. You know, we talked about the brand extension and, and the, the, the draft that they had. Uh, a month or two ago, <clears throat> and you know all these call ups and. Thank you for calling that a draft. I, I was <laughs> waiting. I was waiting for you to comment on that. <laughs> and uh, you know all these call ups and these surplus of talent, wrestlers, superstars, whatever you want to call it, their talent. And you have for Raw, you have a three hour show, give or take commercials. SmackDown, you have a two hour show. You're refusing to do uh, their own pay-per-views anymore because you're not making any money because you think it's because of the fact that uh, it's just too much when it's it's actually too little. It's just too little entertainment, if, if that makes any sense. Um, it may not be the best way to put it, but it's not enough entertainment. Yeah. That's the reason why you're not selling out. Um, but you have this surplus of guys, and you've already seen guys get lost in the shuffle because well we only got a two hour show and we gotta put our champions on there and we gotta you know we gotta have all these bullshit promos that just it's just promo at the promo at the promo at the promo and then we got our commercials I'm sorry but there's just not enough time for you know you 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 that happens for a lot of different companies they're not the WWE is not the only company that, that has a problem with surplus of talent that kind of happens when more people want to get into the business and they happen to be good. The, th- the way that it separates the men from the boys, if you will, when it comes to booking is how do you handle that surplus and is doing tag teams the, the way of doing it? Yes and no. It's the way that new Japan does it. It's the way that other, some other promotions do it. Is it the only way? Of course not. It's not. But this is how they handle, well, hey, here's another match. Juice Robinson and David Finley, we haven't done shit with you lately. But <laughs> you're really good at what you do. I know they've, I know Juice Robinson has been all over the place um, in indie wrestling. Uh, but uh, you guys are, are, are really good at what you do. We love having you. So we're going to put you in a tag team match. And you're going to fight Jay White and Yoshihashi. You know, Jay White, who we were pushing so hard, don't really have a whole lot for him right now. But we certainly want to put them on the card. Exactly. Problem solved. Go out there. We'll give you 10, 15 minutes or so on and so forth. And just do it. Yeah. Do Show it. Show us what you got. Yeah. And then, therefore, give us a reason to say, hey, we got to make sure we got a spot for Jay White next time. You know, because he's better than this, you know, random tag match. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but no, nobody's going to say that's give me the highlight of their undercard or their show. It could steal the show. That's kind of the, the whole point, but it's one of those things where it's, we don't have anything for you, but this is what we're going to do. I will love, I, I, I would challenge the WWE to do that on a weekly basis because they can't. Any of our listeners out there who are, who happen to be NBA fans also, I would hope, you are some of the people that actually watch these tag matches that we're talking about. Whether whether it be through subscription or YouTube or, or however you get your, your wrestling fix on. But it's the same it's the same situation. You know, if you've got LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers going against the Golden State Warriors, I mean it's it's arguable that those are two super teams. Garnering their their members through high profile trades and and things of that nature, mm. you don't often get to see them go head to head. They just so happen to be going head to head in the NBA Finals as we speak. It's the same concept. It doesn't happen often. You're getting to see it. Why not enjoy it? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's like growing up in... I mean, I didn't grow up in the 80s. I was born in the 80s. But, you know, it's like going back to the 80s with, with the, the Lakers and the Celtics, especially during a time when you didn't have national media coverage like you do now. And it was... It just so happened that those fans were so lucky to see that in the NBA Finals. See, I agree with you totally. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to try to get too off topic here, but really quick, I don't understand that. I don't understand that about the current NBA situation. There's a lot of fans out there who absolutely hate this fucking uh, Cavaliers versus Warriors all over again. And... Uh, maybe these people aren't uh, people who grew up during the the dynasty area. The uh, I'm sorry, dynasty era of Lakers and Celtics. It's it's something special, folks. You get to see these teams battle it out and and prove annually that they're the best. Yeah, you you don't have to be a fan of the particular person. I'm I'm not a huge NBA fan these days, personally. Um, a lot of it has to do with, with with my bowls being so so bad and not trying to. Anyways, doesn't matter. But uh, <laughs> this is a wrestling podcast. But um, whether no matter how you feel about guys like LeBron James or, or or Kevin Durant and how he handled the free agency and and all that stuff, you know, all joking aside, it's still something special to watch, and it's. In this case, a situation, it's like, it's like what we should have gotten when they're in WrestleMania with Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. It should have been like that, where two guys that never faced each other, and it's like, here you are in the grandest stage of them all. Now you get the shot, and we didn't get that because of bullshit. But it's that mentality of Ric Flair always fought, you know. Harley Race and Dusty Rhodes and Sting and Lex Luger. Hulk Hogan always fought, you know, Andre the Giant and Sergeant Slaughter and guys like that. And here, what what happens if they face each other? Again, fancy booking here. What happens if, you know, the North, you know, New York faces Atlanta, Georgia? You know, in the sense of Ric Flair and NWA or WCW and the WWF in, in, in New York with Hulk Hogan. It's that mentality of okay, well now they go at it, you know everything else is done. They've 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 paved their way, and now they get to go at it head to head. And it's unfortunate it never happened. At least during that time, it it finally happened. But you know, Beach Blast or Batch of the Beach '94. Yeah. By that point, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's it's it, it, it's still you got you still got. In the op, you know, you would you would have had the opportunity to f- see Hogan and and Flair, and you know, there's other examples, but that was that was essentially your equivalent of Warriors Cavaliers, as far as 2018 is concerned. You know, it was that mentality of well, these guys now, you know, because you know, you go over to basketball, Cavaliers and Warriors, you only face each other twice a year. You know, so it could be a random, you know, Monday in December. And that's all you got. <laughs> and that's all you got. You know. Here it's just now you have a seven game series, or well, at least a four game series, but you know a best of seven series. Who's the best? And this is the fourth year in a row that it's happened. Whether you're a fan of the team or not, there's going to come a point. And I've all, I've all, I just I just recently said goodbye to one of my all time favorite heavy metal bands, uh, the Almighty Slayer. I got to witness their their final tour here in Chicago the world tour and I got to say goodbye to them. And it was really hard for me to do that because such a huge part of my life. And I remember having a conversation before about set lists, you know, raining blood, of course, you know, postmortem angel of death and all these other great songs. And so many people would say to me, like, aren't you tired of hearing those same songs? You know, because it'd be those songs and it may be a few other ones. And I said, yeah, I wish they would mix it up a little bit more. I mean, those songs particularly, no, keep them. But, yeah, I, I get that. But you have to understand one thing. Somebody always told me this. There's going to come a point in your life where that doesn't exist anymore. And all you have is memories. 
and all you're going to ever want is those same songs back into your life. And I already do, and it's only two, been two weeks. <laughs> you know, that's how much the band means to me. And it's the same thing for anything when it comes to whether it's professional wrestling or if it's basketball, like this. Appreciate it because there's going to come a point where these guys aren't going to be around anymore. Yeah, and then you'll be bitching about how yeah. you don't have it. It's like growing up in Chicago. You know, you had to appreciate what you saw. And, and not only Jordan, but that entire team. Because all these years later, we've never come close to having the teams that we had in the 90s. No fucking way. Not even close. No, not even close. You know, so just cherish it, man. And and it's the same thing for, for wrestling. I mean, I wanted to bring up Kazuchika Okada because we're talking about Dominion here. And you and I are the agreements that we're not huge fans of streaks. Absolutely. Not <clears throat> not a fan of a streak. But there's something different about Kazuchika Okada and that IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Where I look at that and I'm, I'm so glad that I got to see every single one of those title defenses. I could tell you right now what it is for me. I don't know if you'll agree with me or it's not, here. but... It's the fact that he's not dominating everyone. Is he winning these matches? Of course he is. Absolutely. That's that's where the streak comes from. But he's not dominating all these guys. He's he's having wrestling matches with them. You get to see his flaws. You get to see his weaknesses. He just happens to bounce back and win win the the match. And and for me, that's that that's what makes it so believable. That's what gives it its uh, integrity. And, you know, you have to have something like this for, for one, for it being the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. Because, let's face it, it still has its prestige. Oh, yeah. It still has its honor. All that is attached to this belt, unlike some other belts, you know, that are (laughs) supposed to be universal in nature. Yeah, I never heard of that belt. Yeah. <laughs> never heard of it. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, yeah, that's what it is for me. That's why it uh, it's a little bit different, I think. It's it's that. It's, it's again, and it's the, the ultimate reason why I watch professional wrestling. It's entertaining. Nobody wants – well, I don't say nobody. I, I, I shouldn't – I, I got to stop myself when I say nobody because there are people <laughs> out there who love people – just dominating guys and having five minute matches. And that's well, what, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, yeah. that's that's definitely true. That's, otherwise, that's why Braun Strowman is over, and I'm using exactly. my I'm using my fingers here, people. Yeah, he because he's not over. That's not what over looks like. So stop trying to tell me he's over, please. I mean, I, mean, I don't mind. I don't mind that there's you, you have these big hulking guys come in and demolish anyone and everyone. You, it, it's it's a slippery slope. You have to do it in a certain way. Otherwise, you're going to lose a whole bunch of fucking people's attention. Mine included. Well, the, the problem with that is that every time that they do anybody, not just, I'm not, I'm not, I noticed I didn't specify a company, but there's a, there's a big guy that dominates the, the roster. Nobody ever goes all in with them. It's, it's always where well, you're going to dominate, but we're going to have this, ridiculously strong like plexiglass ceiling that even you can't break through because <laughs> because once you start get talking about titles oh no, no you can't win titles you can't do that well I've beaten everybody else so put me in a, in the match against a champion oh, no, 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 it doesn't make any sense uh, well there, therefore you, you know you know what you did is that you tied a fucking noose around their neck and told them to jump and say, Pretty there you much. go, there's your career. You know, that's that's what's going to happen with Braun Strowman. I'm telling you that right now. That's what's going to happen unless somebody takes my advice and just says, you know what, fuck it, let's go all in with this guy. I don't want it to happen, but at this point, <laughs> you might as well just do it. Just just, just completely full-on sell out with this guy. He's your next WWE champion or universal champion or what have you. He should have been the guy that knocked off Brock Lesnar a long time ago. And again, not a fan of either guy. Not a fan, especially of Braun Strowman, because he's so terrible. But that again, you you already put you you painted the picture for him. 
You're going to dominate, but you're never going to be successful. That's such an oxymoron. It is. <laughs> and you know what? That Now that you say that, that match, it, it would have made more sense than this whole debacle with Roman Reigns. Oh, my God. You know? I don't want to hear anybody ever complain about Roman Reigns not being good for business because he just... He just took it on the chin. He did. Took it on the chin for both for both uh, for every single match he's had against Lesnar. He's taken it on the chin. You know, Lesnar, you're going to drop the title to Seth Rollins. All right. So Roman, you're going to take the pin. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, Roman, we're going to go through this whole fucking debacle with with you and 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 Lesnar. You're going to get all this buzz and you're still going to lose. All right. But we're going to do it because we, we want him to go to Saudi Arabia. Okay. Oh, you're still going to lose that match too. All right. You know, <laughs> he, he he played the game. He played the he, game. He did. Uh, you, can't, you can't be mad and say, oh, he's forced down our throats when he lost every single time. Every single big match he has lost to Brock Lesnar. So uh, that's not being forced on anybody's throats. But anyways, Dominion, it's happening tomorrow. New Japan World, get your subscription. If you haven't done so, please go through us and do that. Go to 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash NJPW. Get yourself a New Japan Pro Wrestling World. It's only about 9 bucks a month. It's a, it's a steal in my book. And you get Dominion to watch it live if you're going to be up. Yeah. Or, or you can watch I mean, whenever you want. Yeah, you can, you can be like me and, and, you know, be up at the crack of fucking dawn to watch the show. Which I don't do very often, mind you. I don't. I don't want to give that uh, that idea. There's no way in hell that's He's that guy. No, I, <laughs> I wish, but no. I uh, used to be that guy. I get up that early. Not anymore. That's just my new job. Yeah, I was gonna say that it has to do with with uh, you know the job and the family and things of that nature. Otherwise, I would. I probably would, especially uh, a show of this caliber. So, so let's. Uh... Before we take a quick break here, let's let's quickly run down the rest of this card and uh, try to sell you on uh, New Japan World here. Uh, more tag action. Tomohiro Ishii, who is the uh, Rev Pro champ uh, based out of England. Uh, he's teaming up with his Chaos uh, par- uh, member, Toru Yano, with his uh, bootleg DVDs and all. <laughs> Taking on Suzuki Goon. Uh, Badass team, too. Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. The workhorse professional wrestling right there, Zack Sabre Jr. Absolutely. I love that team. I don't I don't know how I feel. I'm sure it's going to be a good match. I just don't know how I feel about uh, Ishii and Yano tagging it up there. That's, they've been doing it for a while. They have. I, I, I agree. I'm not a huge fan of that tandem, but they've been doing it for a while now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to Suzuki Goon winning that one. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too, and and you know those uh, those young boys are gonna uh, gonna have a rude awakening. <laughs> you know, Suzuki is not not uh, not nice to those guys. Uh, we got uh, got our title matches, more title matches here. Hiroki Goto defending the Never Open Weight Championship versus Michael Elgin. I haven't seen him in a while, and uh, Suzuki Goon member Taichi. I in a th- three-way match. I think the whole Elgin thing, uh, part of the reason you haven't seen him a lot lately is because of the, I'm going to I'm gonna say suppose, alleged, I'm going to say alleged uh, sexual assault charges he was facing a That's couple right. months ago. Yeah, okay. And, and I, I know he's... He's taken quite the back seat in terms of his career, uh, whether it be for New Japan or the Indies. Um, it's, it's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy story and and I don't, I'm not going to sit here and tell it to you guys, but do your research. There's stuff out there on the net, but I think that's why we haven't seen a whole lot of them, unfortunately. And, uh, it's kind of a shame whether it's true or not, because the guy can work. Probably one of the best big guy workers. Absolutely. Does, does he, um, he's, uh, does he, of course he does. (laughs) He, uh, he, this is his, his kind of a match, you know, I think he would make an awesome never weight open, uh, never open weight champion. Uh, I don't know that he beats, uh, Goto here, but it's, it's going to be a pretty decent match. Yeah. I, I, those three guys definitely are going to have some good chemistry together. 
Uh, Goto, uh, before we started recording, we were watching his match on the, the finale of the Best of Super Juniors, and that was another guy, too. I I, I just couldn't even yeah, recall. He was just MIA. Yeah, I don't know if he was he went, you know? hurt or... So, it's good to see him back. I I just I wish i see more of them. Uh, and then we got three more title matches here. We're going to spoil it for ourselves. We already spoiled it. We already know. We're watching the actual final round of the Best of Super Juniors. It's between Hiromu Takahashi uh, and Taiji Ishimori, who is the newest member of the Bullet Club. He's the new Bone Soldier. Spoiler alert here. Hiromu Takahashi takes the victory. He is going to challenge Will Ospreay for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. That's a rivalry renewed. You excited about this one? Definitely. Uh, congratulations to Takahashi, first and foremost. Highly capable super junior. Oh, yeah. And uh, let's face it, between the single stuff he's done all year and the stuff he's done with uh, the rest of his stable and LIJ, man. He's he's already had a, a pretty awesome year, and what better way to to top it off uh, than to win a championship? I don't know that he'll do it, but uh, if I had to pick a guy, yeah, I'm gonna pick Takahashi. I think he's got a lot of momentum going into the match. Will Osprey, as in, in a recent interview, has called out the entire junior heavyweight division, saying that uh, he's got nothing to prove, that they have everything to prove to him. Uh, Will Ospreay is just so unbelievable with the type of matches he puts on. And then to see, see him cut a promo like that, which is not very common from him. Uh, he's, but he, he's having a banner year. He's having a banner year. And I, I was just going to say, like it's it's well-deserved. That that cockiness, that ego, man, keep it up. Because like, he is just killing it right now. And Absolutely. Not, not, not just in the junior heavy division, but everywhere he goes in professional wrestling. There's a reason why he's uh, he's a hot ticket item, no matter where he goes. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi is another one of those guys that you go back to his matches two years ago when I first started really noticing him. I was like, this this, this dude's really good, and Takahashi is one of those guys that can main event pretty much any card that you put him on, and he continues to get better and better and better, and the stuff that he's willing to do. It's very much over. It's overlooked, but it's starting to become less than overlooked, which is a great thing. So, this right here, I I was pulling for uh, Ishimori uh, to, to 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 have the rematch with with Osprey because they had a great match uh, during the uh, the pool of the t- tournament. But this right here is one of those highlights for me as well. Uh, and then we have our main events. We have our co-main event. And I have to say this, too, because it's going to be archived at some point. Because we, we went into some, before we released episode one, we had some really good stuff regarding uh, Russell Kingdom back in January. I really enjoyed those episodes. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, at some point, we're going to archive those for you so you can listen and, and, and go back and relive Russell Kingdom as you enjoy your brand new uh, New Japan World subscriptions that I know you're going to get. <laughs> um, how fitting, before we even talk about the matches, how fitting is it that this, the four guys that co-headline Russell Kingdom are co-headlining Dominion? And Dominion, for those of you who are, who are not familiar with New Japan Pro Wrestling, this is the second biggest event of the year. This is this is their, for all intents and purposes, this is their SummerSlam. Yep, that's exactly it. Before we get to the heavyweight title match, uh, let, let's let's talk about Chris Jericho against Tetsuya Naito. Tetsuya Naito is defending his IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Uh, not that that matters, yeah, <laughs> which we talked about on here. Yeah, we we did in a previous episode, but. I can't wait for this match to happen. Uh, I love the build-up. Don't get me wrong. If we were talking about this match before Chris Jericho's match with Kenny Omega, I would have my doubts just like I had my doubts back then. Yeah. Because, let's face it, Chris, Chris Jericho is, is kind of in the beginning stages of the twilight of his career. Yeah. You know, he, he he's not the the... 
Chris Jericho of old, and that's fine. I'm okay with that, but I didn't know what kind of performance he was going to be able to put on, and he sure as hell changed my mind after facing Kenny Omega at Wrestle Kingdom. So for him to jump in the boat and decide he wants to face Tetsuya Naito, I can't wait. I I have become so excited about this match. Uh, Naito and all of LIJ, definitely another group of guys that I can't wait to see every time they step on the screen. Yes, absolutely. And and the way Naito has just lost all his fucks to give, (laughs) whether he's champion or not, man, I... as generic as it sounds, this it's just going to be no holds barred brawl, brawl until you can't brawl anymore. And I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm fucking ecstatic. Part of the reason I want to be up at the crack of a fucking dawn, <laughs> waking up the household, waking up the household. Yeah, absolutely. So I've, I've got on record saying that professional wrestling is the ultimate variety show. When it's done right, it's the ultimate variety show. And which this this card has done that. Chris Jericho and Tetsuya Naito for me is all the ultimate variety show put together in one match. Cause you're gonna get first and foremost, you're gonna get a great wrestling match between two extremely skilled wrestlers, one at the prime of his career, one definitely past his prime, but he still got it. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely still got definitely it. Definitely still got it. And you have Two intriguing characters that, let's face facts here. Whether whether you want it or not, there's gonna be parts where you're gonna you're gonna chuckle, you're gonna <laughs> laugh. There's going to be that arrogant cockiness that both of these guys have that they're gonna convey to the ring, and it's almost gonna be a, a, a pissing contest just for that alone. You know the wrestling, the the technical wrestling, the hard hits. You're gonna see brawling. You're gonna see a little bit of high flying. It's going to be the complete package. This right here, for me, as far as the, the main events go, before we talk about the next match, I'm so excited about that match. But there's something a little bit more for me for this match here. And it's a lot of it has to do with Naito because he's so... Moved, whether you're a Jericho fan or not, there's something about... The same thing with the, like with the Shawn Michaels match. There's something about him saying, I want to face you in that ring. And it's such an ultimate honor that this is why we talked about not needing a title to be involved in this match. Give somebody else the intercontinental title. Keep it with Suzuki and let him do something for Dominion. I, it wouldn't have mattered. This match still holds the same the same level of prestige for me and, as, and many wrestling fans, including the two guys in the match. Because it's the ultimate sign of respect. Chris Jericho, with everything that his name brings to the table, says, Naito, you're the guy that I want to face. And Naito is, at the same sense, is if Jericho wants to face the best of the best, then you know you can't just be like, well, I want to face against anybody. I got to go after the best. And right now, one of the best in the world, to use a Chris Jericho term, is Tetsuya Naito. You got two guys that are feeding off of each other right there. That alone, that prestige alone, it's like the Intercontinental title is just there. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. It's just there. Everything else the, 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 everything else sold itself, and that's why this, for me, is the match that I look forward to the most, is because of everything that it brings to the table before the bell even rings. And then what you're going to get after that. I agree. I agree. It, it is definitely one that I am chomping at the bit to watch. But, unfortunately, I hold personal stock in this last match. Okay. For those of you who have been listening since the beginning of this show, I have told you and I have stuck to my guns. We've got Kazuchika Okada defending his IWGP Heavyweight Championship against the one and only Kenny Omega, the cleaner, in a no-time limit, two-out-of-three-falls match. Belt is on the line. Now, 
as lucky as I have been over the years, fantasy booking and it coming true, I could have, I never could have pulled that stipulation out of my ass. I couldn't have sat here and told you it was going to be no time limit, two out of three falls. The two out of three falls especially, but the no time limit, I'm glad they did that. because. Oh, of how, hell yeah. Well, you know, not only that, but 60 minutes. For those who haven't seen these matches before, we've we've gotten riled by some 60-minute time limit draws. Not saying riled like they were bad matches, but God damn it, we wanted to Yeah, we wanted, we wanted to do, yeah, <laughs> fucking fight forever, Yeah, you know? But ever since we've been doing this podcast... And, and again, we, we kind of started things off with Russell Kingdom back in January. I I told everybody, I booked this fucking match. The only the only thing I got wrong so far is that it's happened in about six months earlier than, it, than I had originally projected it to be. But I'm still, I'm still calling, I'm still going to call it the same way. I think Kenny Omega walks away with that title. The, the title... Or sorry, Okada has already broken the. the he's record. already broken the record. He's he's accomplished that streak. He's well over seven hundred days into his title reign. Congratulations to him. I'm I don't want to take anything away from him. I'm just saying I got that feeling. I got that feeling that it's the cleanest time. You have here. You have a company who is poised to become. A, a force to reckon with, not not just uh, in Japan where where their home base is, but globally, and more importantly for for the sakes of us and our listeners, most of our listeners, they're gonna be a contender here in the United States. What better way to do that than to add that international appeal? Now I understand Kenny Omega's Canadian. I get that, but. He's perceived to be a non-Japanese wrestler. Yeah. And that's all that matters in the eyes of, of the American wrestling community here in, in this argument. So what better way to help expand and globalize your product than to have a non-Japanese wrestler hold your heavyweight championship? I'm telling you. He's going to walk away with that title. Calling it right now? I'm calling it, man. I've been calling this since January. <laughs> We're going to have to do a follow-up on uh, next week's episode to see if... Uh... <laughs> I'm I... game. I'm game. I'll be here. You know what? I've 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 been watching wrestling with you for, for years now. You, uh, you're you really good at, at, at calling calling shots and calling matches. and So I I know you've been, you've been crying. Not crying. I'm sorry. You've been... <laughs> You've been saying this for uh, for for months, months. Actually, you know what? I think you you might have even said that to me last year at Dominion. As we were watching Dominion twenty seventeen after Omega Law, or was it a draw? It was a draw. It was a draw, believe, yeah. yeah. That he was gonna he was gonna be the guy that takes that title from from Okada. Okada still has that title. I thought it was going to be night, so I didn't realize we were in the midst of uh, breaking a record, trying to break a record here. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was certainly going to be night, so at Wrestle Kingdom, and here we are, Okada, that son of a bitch won't fucking lose <laughs> that title, <laughs> and we're right back to where we were a year ago, and it's Kenny Omega. I, I this match came out of nowhere for me when they booked this match. I just. You know, with everything going on with, with Cody and the Bullet Club and, you know, Bushi and the Golden Lovers and the Bucks, I just figured Kenny Omega's going to have something to do with that. And then out of nowhere, he's challenging Okada for the title, and it's like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> this right here is one of those matches that I think you go back, you, you look at some of these other matches that we, we pointed out, you know, I point out Jay White. Jay White, we don't have anything for you, but he's the U.S. Heavyweight Champion. I think there's a reason why he's just doing a tag match. Uh, I don't see those, t- especially the non-title ones, going that long. And the reason why, because this right here is going to go 60 plus. Oh my God. Without a doubt. Yes. You know, you add no time limit. And now, not only that, but it's no longer one fall to the finish. You can pretty much guarantee it's going to go three falls. 
It's going to go three falls. <laughs> you know, I can tell you right now, it's going to go three falls. <laughs> My only thing that I want from this, and I, I don't, I don't have any concerns, is that I want a clean finish. I want clean. I know we're in the midst of you know Bullet Club stuff and this and that, and then we talked about the Hewish Bullet Club, you know, coming back together. If you're going to take that title off of Kazuchika Okada, do it cleanly. That's my only request. That that is the only thing I am not sure about myself is whether or not it's going to be clean. Do I want it to be clean? Hell yes. Yes. Will it happen that way? I'm going to say yes and no. And the only reason why is because it is multiple falls. Yes. And I and I'm that's what sells me on three they're going to do all three falls. Yeah. I think what it, what will happen is the first two falls will be non-clean finishes and we'll get to see other storylines progress. I have a feeling that uh, it's, you know, karma's going to come back around and it's going to bite Kenny Omega in the ass and he's going to have a bushi out there with him as support instead of the Bucks and he's going to turn and cost Omega a fall. I think I, so, yeah. I really think yeah, that. Yeah, you've got told me that. And and that will therefore solidify the the reuniting of the young bucks and Kenny Omega because originally because they'll come and they'll they'll uh, essentially uh, help Kenny Omega recover. I'm not saying they'll be the cause for a, 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 an unclean fall, but they'll come out and they'll show their support by. By taking care of Ibushi. I really feel strongly about that. But that's why I say there's, it's it's going to be clean and it's not going to be clean. I think that final fall will definitely be clean because you want, at the end of the night, you want that title to keep its prestige. Yeah, absolutely. And what better way than to end a multiple fall hour plus match than with a clean finish. Like you can't, you can't beat that. So, I man, I, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, we only got we, we got less than 24 hours. Less so, than 24 so hours, yeah. Better get your sleep. Yeah, yeah. I will, man. I will. Before before we do that, well, uh, sleep or a lot of coffee, either way, one, one or the other. Maybe both. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go ahead and pay some bills, and we'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Ebates. Do you do online shopping at all? Excellent. If you do, you can help support the show and save some money while you purchase stuff online. Have access to over 10,000 different shops online, including major brands such as Nike, GameStop, Uber, Burger King, and just about any other online store that you can think of, including Amazon. Each purchase you make helps support the show and saves you money. Accrue enough cash back and then cash out and receive your big fat paycheck in the mail from Ebates. Take the time, support the heels, support the baby faces, support your 20 by 20 ring crew, and be like the boys. Save some money. 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash Ebates. And we are back. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, every every time that we close this show, I I always I always shout out the the hashtag support professional wrestling, and I figured it'd be a good start since we're starting new new things here on the show as we get our feet wet a little more and more uh, to to kind of dive into a little, as we saw oh as we see Hiroma broke broke his uh. His trophy for the best of Super Juniors already. <laughs> <laughs> Tough break. Hell of a match. Hell of a match, I'll tell you what, though. But uh, we, we wanted to kind of go back. Practice what we preach, you know, which you and I already do. But to uh, give you a little bit more of what we're talking about, and in case you don't know what's going on in the wrestling world, we're, that's what we're here for. And that's what we want to do. And you already know about June 9th. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. It's the first major event of June, uh, if you want to count the con- the conclusion of the Best of Super Junior Tournament. 
Uh, more to come in the month of June, and we'll get more into that as we progress throughout the month. But also, too, this weekend alone, uh, including today, if you want to stay up late, I know you you got a busy morning, maybe not for you particularly, <laughs> but for anybody else. Try me, I have multiple devices. <laughs> So and still one good eye, so that's all you need. <laughs> so when we first started the whole watch support professional wrestling, we we first started this podcast. I wanted to practice what I what I preach or what I was gonna preach, and I wanted to get more into professional wrestling. So I just said, "Well, what else is out there? What what haven't I seen?" And let me check it out. And I came across this small indie promotion based out of Wilmington, California, called PCW Ultra. It was via the Fight TV app. If you don't know what Fight TV is, you can go to our website at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight. That's F-I-T-E. If you sign up through us for the Fight TV app, we're going to give you $10 worth of credit right off the bat for free. You get to watch a show on us. How fucking cool is that? You could watch this show on us. <laughs> there you go. So I, I was watching the Fight TV app. I was watch, I was catching uh, Ring of Honor every single week, so I knew all about it. Which Ring of Honor every Monday you can catch you can catch them. You can also that's for free. Too. Yeah, Ring of uh, Honor Ring of Honor TV is for it's, free it's on free. the Fight TV app. You could also catch uh, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling every Sunday afternoon. You can catch that. That's a good promotion. Really well put together promotion. Definitely. Uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Championship Wrestling from Arizona, as well as a bunch of other small uh, promotions out there. For free. And that's that's the, free. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff for free. Yeah. You don't have to purchase everything that's uh, available on the Fight TV app. But. Absolutely. And so I came across PCW Ultra, and the main event, what, what hooked me was it was... Uh, it was Johnny Ultra, who has wrestled under many names. Johnny Mundo, uh, Johnny Impact, John Morrison, if you're a WWE fan, or Johnny Nitro. Him, he's teaming up with this guy we might have talked about on the show before, called Sammy Callahan. And I don't know if you heard of him. I have. You've heard of him? Okay. I've heard of him. You've heard of the draw. The draw. And they were teaming up to take on Penta El Cermiete who is their champion down there. And his tag team partner, I was just completely just shocked, was the great Muta. <laughs> You're talking about a company I'd never heard of before, and he's like, here, we have the great Muta, which they were advertising as potentially his last match in the United States ever. And at his age, could be right. You could be right, yeah. I was like, well, I got to watch this show. And so I bought it. I ordered it. And it was it was 15 bucks, And it was some of the best wrestling I've seen in a long time. I was just blown away by how good this show was. And it was their anniversary 2K18 show from January of 2018. They don't do shows every month. Um, I would like them to. I, I think they're, they that's their goal is at least do one show a month. Um since then, they've had three shows. They've had a show in March and a show in May. And they are doing a show in June called Opposites Attack. Again, you can catch that on Fight TV. Uh, again, that's 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight, F-I-T-E. And it's, it's happening to you tonight, June 8th. Your main event, this is an indie promotion, guys. Your main event, Penta El Cerro Miete versus Sammy Callahan for the PCW Ultra Heavyweight Championship inside of Steel Cage. I think I just messed my pants. Like, I, dude. You talk about an appetizer for Dominion. Right. The moment you told me about that, I was like, holy shit, I can't, I can't not. Avoid that. Like I have to see that. That's that's fucking great. I, I've been uh, more than pleasantly surprised with this promotion, and every time I turn around and I watch stuff, 
I love it more and more, you know, and again, <laughs> we try to bring you all the available avenues of, of watching wrestling here. If you already have Fight TV, there you go, order it. If you, if you, uh, if you need more PCW Ultra in your life, Amazon. Yeah. It's part of Amazon Prime, believe it or not. <coughs> You get you get uh, pretty much um, every show, every previous PCW Ultra show for free as a Prime member. That's one of the Prime perks. If you're a wrestling fan, it's hard to pass up, man. That's awesome, awesome shit. Uh, if you don't have a Prime subscription already, take advantage of it through us. Show the you show us a little bit of love and. Uh, Amazon will, will chip in a couple dollars to go towards our production costs. You can do all that at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash Amazon for more information. But yes, PCW Ultra, Ultra tonight, the day before Dominion, you get to see one hell of a fucking match. For for their heavyweight title, no less. I'm, I'm fucking excited. I can't wait. Yeah, that's an unbelievable match. That's a, it's, that's a great way to kick off what's really set up to be a really good weekend of, of professional wrestling. Um, and it doesn't stop there. It's not just a one 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 match and we're we're done here. The light heavyweight championship. We got to see him not that long ago live. Swerve himself, Shane Strickland defends the PCW Ultra Light Heavyweight Championship. Against CMLL's Dragon Lee, you know what we were uh, Matt and I were laughing because we had recorded and released the episode of our podcast for for that week, which was what two weeks ago. Yeah. So, uh, episode thirteen. <laughs> as soon as we released episode thirteen, we had talked about Shane Strickland and how he needs to. Kind of step it up a bit, and then we went to go see him uh, at an Evolve show here in Chicago, and boy did he step it up. He, I don't know if he, uh, he's a listener. If he's a listener or what, but damn, um, talk about read our minds, and uh, he he put on a hell of a show against their heavyweight champion in uh, the King of Bros, Matt, Matt Riddle. Riddle. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't speak enough about Shane Strickland. And then have him go one on one against Dragon Lee, who is that's going to be a hell of a fucking match. You talk about a super, <laughs> super cruiserweight right there, if you want to call him that. I mean, that's what Dragon Lee is. He's, Pretty much, yeah. He's got everything that you want out of out of the, the cruiserweight or light heavyweight. Plus, he's extremely strong, credible physique on this dude, incredibly fast, incredibly smart in that ring. Him versus Shane Strickland. I don't even know what I'm more excited about, actually, between that and the main event. True. I mean, co-main events right there. Um, if you're a fan of women wrestling, they got that, too. Tessa Blanchard, their PCW Ultra Women's Champion. She's facing against Rachel Ellering in, in some uh, legacy matches here as far as the daughters of famous P- professional wrestlers. Pretty much. Who are making a name for themselves in, in their own respect. Uh, completely just owning the indie in the indie promotion right now, both of these ladies, and they're going to go at it one on one, and that's again signing me up. Tessa Blanchard is on a fucking tear right now. If you haven't watched any of her stuff lately, please stop what you're doing. Go do it. Whether you do it through YouTube or PCW Ultra or whatever other little indie. Um, stream you can get your hands on uh if if you if you happen to be a fight tv member you trust me there's there's a plethora of tessa blanchard on there so i'm i'm game i i can't wait i can't wait for for this card to happen and and uh more than likely i'll catch the replay but i'm definitely fucking interested i can't wait yeah i mean other matches too the tag titles are on the line war beast uh, I'm forgetting the name of the individuals. Uh, I think one's Joseph Fatu. Um, anyways, they're facing against uh, Ohio versus everything. Uh, Jake and Dave Christ, you are known for their 
tenure in Impact Wrestling currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, they run in partners with Sammy Callahan. Uh, they, they're also called Ohio is for Killers and other promotions, but I think they're going with the OVE name just because it's the more popular name. Uh, that's going to be a really good match. I really, really think that one should be a no holds barred type match. Those, those, those four guys are just going to tear the house. Yeah, down. they're going to, they're going to be all over the damn place. What's going to be interesting here is uh, Kevin Sullivan's going to be at ringside with, with War Beast. I forgot all about that. Yeah. So he's... that's going to be. I, I don't know if uh, for those of you who don't know, they had a little uh, Callahan and Kevin Sullivan had a little run in uh, <laughs> about a month ago. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Right. And, uh, yeah, so having Callahan and, and OVE there at the show, and especially fighting War Beast, yeah, it, it's going to get fucking crazy. And I'm sure there's going to be a, a railroad spike involved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other other stuff on this card, too. ACH is on the card. You just got done seeing him, the best of Super Juniors. He's back in the States. Uh, Brody King versus Jeff Cobb, two two heavyweights going at it. That should be a good uh, good match. Brody King is really really start paying attention to that guy. He's a he's a, a kind of a third member of War Beast, mm-hmm. uh, give or take. I, I know that's he's kind of back and forth with them, but he's really really kind of stepped up in his own. Um, you got a four way match. It's got Ace Romero, Darby Allen, Eli Everfly, and Jake Atlas. Four very impressive high flyers. Absolutely, that's that's going to leave very little to the imagination happening there. Uh, and if you're a MMA fan, a little extra bonus if you want to. Stefan Bonner is making his in ring debut. Interesting, interesting to say the least. Yeah, especially given how his uh, UFC career, MMA career, ended. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but that's all happening Friday, June eighth. Again, PCW Ultra. It's called Opposites Attack. Really, really good show. I cannot stress that enough. I'm look. I'm not getting any incentive on selling you this. Yes, the 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 we want you to do. You go through our website and everything like that. But my whole thing is, I want you guys to watch good professional wrestling, good indie wrestling. Yes. This right here. I just started in January. I've only seen two shows from this year. I haven't seen their May show yet. And I'm telling you, this right here is a show to watch. If you're looking for something to do Friday night or at all, whether it be in the weekend or sometime next week, go back and watch this show. Order this show. Do yourself a favor because it's going to be really, really good wrestling. So check this out. What did, do you remember what it cost for your PCW Ultra show? Was it 15 15 bucks. All right, so check this out. This episode drops the same day. Earlier in that day, Friday, June 8th, as that PCW Ultra show, you sign up for Fight TV, download the app. The app is free to download. There's tons of free wrestling on there for you to watch. Literally tons. But, you want to check out the PCW Ultra show that we're talking about, and trust me, you'll want to, as long as you're a new subscriber to Fight TV... We're going to give you 10 bucks of free credit right off the bat. So if you order this event, you're only paying 5 bucks. To 5 fucking bucks. Watch. 5 bucks to watch something you 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 would easily see on pay-per-view elsewhere for like 40, 50 bucks. Awesome wrestling. I, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but if, if you're not doing this for 5 bucks, then what what are you listening to this show for? To, yeah. be, honest, to be honest with you. But uh, go ahead and do that. 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight, F-I-T-E. Yeah, it sells itself, people. It should. It should. <laughs> so, another thing, too, again, more wrestling to, to, to break down. June 9th, Saturday, Saturday night, if you want more wrestling, if you want women wrestling, one thing, one promotion that we highly recommend here at the 20 by 20 crew is Shine. Uh, Absolutely, and this is uh, obviously this is the same night as Dominion. The same night as Dominion. The same day, I should say. Yes, a little bit later, a little bit more regular, regular time. Here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, six p.m. Eastern, five Central. We're talking p.m. here. Yeah, p.m. p.m. <laughs> People are awake, Joe. <laughs> but again, I, more 
at, you know more great wrestling action from some phenomenal uh, female wrestling from the female side of things, which of course we've totally support. We've been supporting since really since episode two when we started talking about female <laughs> wrestling. Um, some of the matches here, some of the the, the highlight matches. Uh, Priscilla Kelly, who is such an intriguing character, great in ring talent. Um, she's going to go one on one against Holly Dead in what should be a really interesting match. <laughs> so two really intriguing people. You have you have uh, Mercedes Martinez and Evelise uh, Mercedes Martinez. You might remember from the May Young Classic. Uh, Evelise, you m- could check her out. Uh, I think she's still part of Lucha Underground. I'm not so sure, but uh, Lucha Underground, by the way, that's coming back. And uh, you can you can actually catch previous seasons on Netflix. Yes, you can. Believe it or not, you can catch it on Netflix. Season four is debuting Wednesday night, June thirteenth, out on uh, the El Rey Network. So check your local listings there. That's going to be that that right there. I I cannot stress enough. If you're looking for some more wrestling to watch on a weekly basis, Lucha Underground is definitely for you. And uh, if you got a Netflix subscription, definitely check out the uh, the previous previous seasons. seasons. Yeah, absolutely. It's just abs- you know you, some of the best wrestling out there today. Um, but those two, Mercedes Martinez and Evelise, they're taking on Ruthless Ambition, team of Maria Manic and Penelope Ford. Uh, two uh, really good, uh, a really good tag team there. Two really good tag teams. That's going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, Candy Cartwright of the uh, Cutie Pie Club. It's a funny name, kind of a weird gimmick, but um, she's she's a she's a badass bitch in her own right. Uh, she's defending against Santana, and a uh, for the she's defending the Shine Nova Championship, and then the champ Lufisto, who has been kind of running running the show for quite some time. Yeah, she's taking on Sue Young for the Shine Championship. Sue Young, you can catch on Impact Wrestling as well. That's right. She's actually, I don't know, this might be a spoiler alert, so I apologize, but she's currently their champion. I'm not sure if she's a champion on TV. Right. But uh, that's happening, again, that's Saturday night, June 9th, Shine 51. That's part of the WWN Network. You can also catch that through Fight. Again, we'll say it one more time, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight. You know how to spell it yet? (laughs) <laughs> F-I-T-E. And again, take advantage of that because if you take advantage of the $10 off, it's either 5 bucks, or if I'm not mistaken, it might be free. After the credits? After the credits. I yeah. think Shine is $10. I could be wrong about that, but... So there you go. 5 bucks max or nothing at all. Uh, yeah, you're either getting it for 5 bucks or, or you're getting it for free bucks. Free bucks. Free bucks. <laughs> all of the WWN stuff that we we talk about on the show is available th- through the fight tv app um you know some of it you do have to pay pay for a majority of it you have to pay for but again they're like nine ten dollar twelve dollar fifteen dollar yeah. shows you're, you're, you're not paying an arm and a leg uh to to go see these shows and we're not asking you to buy all the shows but i buy, mean buy they're, what they, you want yeah. yeah buy what you want but definitely watch just watch good wrestling that's all we ask. Yeah, that's 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 it. And you know, there's so much more throughout uh, you know, the month of, of June. You know, Evolve is a show, is a promotion that I hold so near and dear to my heart now. And I was so lucky to be able to go to Evolve one oh four that happened in, in uh the suburb of Chicago uh, back in May. You and I went. It was a great um, time. Oh my god. It ended up being Keith Lee's second to last match in Evolve. Damn. I did not know it at the time. I, I wish I would have known because I would have stood in line and did the meet and greet with him. At, at least we got the bask in his glory. We got the bask in his glory. <laughs> Keith, Keith Lee, for those who are don't know who we're talking about, if you're a WWE fan, he's coming. He's yeah, coming to you'll WWE. See him, you'll see him on NXT soon enough. And be good to him because he's, he's one of the best in the business today. Uh, he's I a big boy. he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's got a big smile on him too. He 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 has fun in that ring. That's what I love about him. Yeah. And I'm certainly gonna miss him in independent wrestling. I I don't want to speculate too much, and I think we're gonna talk more about Keith Lee in the future. But I just hope that uh, that the the powers that be treat him 
the way that he deserves to be treated. So absolutely, I, I hope he stays on NXT for quite some time. So do I. So do I. He's he's a guy that definitely could be a, a champion. I would love to see a Keith Lee versus Alistair Black match. <laughs> yeah, book that one following the contest. <laughs> so uh, this is not happening this particular weekend, but Saturday, June twenty third. Is, is a big show for evolving, and we're talking. We're going to run down some some more events in January to kind of get you an idea of what's out there. We talked about Swerve. We talked about the King of Swerve versus the King of Bros. We saw that match. We did. We saw that match. That was where Strickland stepped it up, man. He, he stepped he, it up. He almost broke Riddle's arm too. That was fucking crazy. He's gonna have. He's gonna have an opportunity to step it up again because this time he's gonna face Matt Riddle. For the Evolve Championship, and I, I need to say this: this is a no rope breaks match. Oh shit! So rope breaks do not. Matt Riddle does not like rope breaks. He he feels that it's a it's kind of a downside of professional wrestling, and he might have to eat those words. Fuck. Matt Riddle versus Shane Strickland. That right there could be. And and you know we talk about Dominion. And we talk about. Uh, we'll, we'll even talk about. WWE a little bit here, uh, that right there has the potential to be one of the best matches of the month of June. Absolutely, with, yeah. with the, oh my god, you know we Matt and I got to see see the their match at Evolve One Hundred Four, <coughs> and and at at that event, oh my god, oh, yeah, that was just fucking insane. That was the main event that night, yeah. And oh my god, Oops. I was the amount of money we we paid. <laughs> kayfabe here we paid 40 bucks a piece for tickets for front row and that match alone was worth 40 bucks oh yeah Without you know doubt. that's not counting keith lee that's not counting any of the other shit that we austin got to see. theory saw. austin theory it, oh my god you're, you're missing a hell of a show if you're not watching the ball if if evolve ever hits your neck of the woods i'm, I'm please go you, just I, go i implore you to go you don't you don't have to get front row just get general admission if you want. If you don't only want to spend ten bucks. Oh, you know what? Too, they also run uh, Facebook um, sales too. Yeah. So catch them on Facebook. I, I'm not quite sure what their web page is right off the bat, but you can find all that information on our website. I don't know it off the top of my head, but check it out at 20x20crew.com/slash/podcast/slash/evolve. You'll get all their social media information there. Check them out on Facebook. Get yourself some discounted tickets and go see some good fucking wrestling. Yeah, Evolve has a very, and not only that too, but Evolve is kind of that yeah, that unofficial breeder to the WWE now. And I don't know yes, if I, yeah, that no, that is a, a so they are an official breeder. They are an official the breeder. System. Yes. Okay, so that's I don't know if I if I like that per se, but you know it, it's if it gets them exposure, I'm all about it. Same it, here. You know, so. Absolutely. One of those guys that, you know, we talk about a feeder system. One of those guys that will probably be main eventing Monday nights within the next five years, if not sooner, is a guy that we got to actually meet <laughs> somewhat. Uh, and that's the, he's the full impact pro world heavyweight champion and the WWN World Wrestling Network champion. He's a double champion. His name is Austin Theory. He actually stopped me at the show because he liked my El Generico shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got he's got great taste. There you go. And he's going one on one. He's defending the FIP World Heavyweight Championship against DJZ. Anything goes. We got to see this match. Yeah, we did get to see this match. But this time it's it's anything goes. It's anything goes. No and, holds barred. And it's for a title. And for a title. So well, the last one was for a title. This is for a different title. Right for, for a the different title. FIP title. Yes. But yeah, those those guys, DJ Z, from ba, 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 ba. yes, <laughs> from all his uh, Impact Wrestling days, he's now a member of Evolve. I'm glad that he he's healthy again. Hopefully, he stays that way. Austin Theory, man, I I can't say enough about the this dude. He's he's one of those guys. He's not. I don't want to call him the total package because he's not there yet. But he's the total package in in, in the making, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, and he—if you get a chance to meet him, he definitely has that air about him. Yeah, he—he he definitely has all the confidence and, and uh, skill that that is needed to become something big. 
or bigger, I should say. And you know what? I I will not be one bit surprised if he ends up on Monday nights sooner than later. Yeah, I I could totally see that. When I look at uh, at Austin Theory, I look at exactly what the WWE wants in a in a wrestler. Yeah, he's he's that. Whether you I like that per se or not doesn't matter. It's not my. I don't I don't call the shots. But for what it, for what it's worth. I love him in Evolve. He's one of the top draws for Evolve Wrestling. And that's going to be a hell of a match. Another guy that we got to talk about as far as potentially going to the WWE that's on this card. His name is Volter. Oh, God. This this one kind of breaks my heart. It man. does. It was the same thing with the Keith Lee situation. Yeah, it was bad enough that Keith Lee signed. I, don't get me wrong. I, I, I wish nothing but the best for Keith Lee. And I'm looking forward to awesome NXT stuff with him in it. But now they're after Valter, and let's face it, I, th- I think the writing's on the wall. I think I think Valter ends up in NXT by the end of the year, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But for those of you who are, who are still out and about and attending indie shows or watching them on the Fight TV app, enjoy yourself some indie Valter before he goes... And gets signed by by the WWE. Uh, big, big dude. Powerful. Um, probably some of the most horrible chops oh. in in pro wrestling today. And yeah, man, it's, Jesus, it's rough. Yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a me me motherfucker. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, he's going one on one against Darby Allen, and what's oh god a special challenge match and. Uh, Darby Allen, he's again. We talked about him in the PCW Ultra Show. High flyer, you know, one of those risk taker guys. He's one of those guys. He's kind of like the Mikey Whipwreck of today. He he is, but uh, probably a lot more skilled than Mikey oh, Whipwreck. With, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I meant Mikey Whipwreck, and he takes a lot of bumps. He does <laughs> probably more than he probably should on a, on a in a match. Well, basis. this is, this is a rematch from the um, from WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. Uh, they 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 actually had a match and <laughs> let me tell you, Volter ate him up like fucking Sunday morning breakfast. But shit. Well, this is actually the third time this year in Evolve because they they wrestled against each other in January as well. All right, so there you go. This is the fucking rubber match, man. And it just I I watched the one in April and damn, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be the same thing in June. <laughs> It's like every other month, he's got a glutton for punishment. I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be bad for Darby Allen. Uh, he's he's gonna do the job. He's gonna really. He's not even gonna have to sell it that much. Walters is gonna crush him. He's he he is. He's gonna crush. Absolutely him. crush him. Um, also booked for the show, you have uh, you got Catchpoint, Chris Dickinson, Jaka, and Don Don McGarini versus the team of Anthony Henry, Tracy Williams, the Hot Sauce, and. Timothy Thatcher. Jocka took my chair. He took he took the chair, yeah. <laughs> he took my chair and beat somebody with it at the show. That was, he got speared through mine. Yeah, that was crazy. It was uh it was an interesting interesting show to say the least. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool to see them uh seeing them fighting in the in the crowd like that. But uh I know Tracy Williams is Storyline there, he was in the in this group called Catchpoint, which is actually founded by Drew Gulak, who is part of the 205 Live roster. Uh, you know, give me give me some more WWE references there. Uh, got kicked out by Stokely Hathaway and the rest of the group. Stokely Hathaway is kind of like their manager guy, so now he's on a crusade to get his revenge on Catchpoint. There's your storyline right there. Timmy Thatcher and Anthony Henry are just looking for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Henry really surprised me <coughs> at, at the show we were at. Um, he's he's like a again a generic term here, but he's he's a he's a cruiserweight. He's a light heavyweight, but he's got such a fucking mean streak in him, and I, that impressed the shit out of me. Uh, I can't wait to see him in in uh, doing other shows in other other organizations. I would I would love to see this guy get really fucking seasoned. Yeah. So, as far as pushing these guys here, Anthony Henry is one of those guys that I really think you need to learn to name because he's he's for real. He is. Um, Timothy, Timothy Thatcher is pretty well known throughout the indie, uh, indie world. But well, he's, he's also Walter's tag team he's partner. He's also Walter's tag team partner. 
Uh, Timothy Thatcher, though, if you don't know the name, learn the name because he's he's a bad motherfucker too. That's a, that's a really good six man tag match. I, it's going to be a lot of high spots for sure, a lot of hard hitting. Um, there's still more to be to be signed. Uh, Josh Briggs is going to be on the card. We just found out the name Josh Briggs, and he's got this wicked power bomb or choke slam backbreaker that I've never seen before that. I cringed when I saw it live. I mean, it's just he's a, he's a big boy and he's got a lot to uh, a lot of upside to him. Mm-hmm. Ar Fox is on the card uh, at some point with uh, Ayla and the Skulk. Those <laughs> that's where wrestling gets fun, right there. And not only that, but then Ar Fox, Ar Fox, both nights, Chicago and Detroit. Uh, you know, our brothers up uh, up north in Detroit. You guys know you're wrestling just as much as we do. Both of his matches got a this is awesome and a fight forever. AR, AR Fox, AR Fox, he, Fox, he comes out and, you know, he's got the party gimmick and, you know, he comes across as very nonchalant and he just wants to have fun and party, but he gets in that ring and let me tell you, he can go. He can go and, and he he's he's up where, he's up there, he's up there to be, uh, he has the capabilities of being up there with every other light heavyweight out there. Yeah. And uh, as far as Josh Briggs go, Jesus, that move. He picked, <laughs> he, he picked up, uh, who was that, Maserati yeah. from, from A.R. From, Fox's from crew. Skull, yeah. And I'm telling you, folks, you know, I've been watching wrestling since I was three, year old, three years old. So 36 years I've been watching wrestling. The, the way his body crumpled. In that move, I for sure thought they were gonna have to call the show <laughs> and and like get a stretcher. Yeah, and I thought he was it, dead. I yeah. Oh my oh, god, man. it was so bad. Well, he also did a like a almost like a was a sidewalk slam into a backbreaker. Yes, first and then he did that. And then he did that, and I, we were just like, right. oh my god. There's not many times where you feel. Bad, the sense that again, what you felt, where it's just like he's he's not going to be able to walk after <laughs> this, and it's just you just you you, you felt you, like my life flashed before his life flashed before my eyes. It's like he's dead, he's dead. <laughs> um, real quick here, uh, Evolve One Hundred and Seven that takes place the next night, June twenty fourth. Speaking of Ar Fox, he's going to go one on one against Volter. Oh god. That should be fun. <laughs> that should be really fun, especially with the skulk involved. Oh, that should be really Jesus. fun. Uh Matt Riddle versus DJ Z. That's be it's a non title match being dubbed as a first time ever. So if that was your fantasy match, there, there you go. There you go. Uh Austin Theory's got a special title WWN championship match. He's defending two titles over the weekend. Um against an unknown opponent, so they're keeping that one a surprise. I'd be interested to see who he's facing there. Um, and then you got other matches. Tracy Williams uh, versus uh, Chris Dickinson. That should be a good one. Again, more of the catch point rivalry going at it. More Timothy Thatcher. More Anthony Henry. More Josh Briggs. All, all that and more. That's Evolve 106 and 107. and 107. Again, you can catch all of that. On Saturday, June 23rd, and Sunday, June 24th, via Fight TV. That's www.20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight, F-I-T-E. Again, if you don't take advantage of the $10 for this coming weekend, you can save it. Save it. Save it and, and get get yourself a $5 Evolve show. All you got to be is a us. new subscriber. That's all you got to do. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah. So that's that's some a little bit of taste of what we want to do. We want to just run. We don't want to run through every single card. Uh, but <laughs> we'd be here forever. We'd be here forever. You know, <laughs> talk forever. <laughs> but we kind of want to get you understanding. Like, look, this so much more of this is going to be promoted also through our Facebook page at Twenty X Twenty Wrestling Talk. Every time that something's going on, Joe or myself, or if you got something that we don't know about, please post and and say, hey, check this out. Check out this show or check out that show or 
you know, beat us to the punch. Yeah, I we we try to we try to be um, as thorough as possible and and give you information about upcoming shows. Granted, a lot of the the people in our group are either from Chicago or or parts of Indiana, but uh, you know we are expanding, and and uh, you know. A lot of the shows that are promoted there are obviously Chicago shows or Indiana shows, things like that. But we try to give you information on uh, all the different avenues to watch professional wrestling. Good professional Good wrestling. Good professional wrestling, yeah. On that note, we're going to end the episode here. And uh, we hope you enjoy Dominion. Again, if you need a subscription, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash NJPW. You want to watch some other stuff? 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight, F-I-T-E. You've got Amazon Prime subscriptions, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash Amazon. There is a plethora, a proverbial fuck ton, if you will, (laughs) of wrestling for you to watch, both free and paid. And we hope you take advantage of those uh, avenues. Uh, you can also catch us on Facebook, facebook.com slash 20x20 for our page, or facebook.com slash groups slash 20x20 talk. Hit us up there and uh, see what we're discussing. Uh, we're also on Twitter. You can hate tweet us at 20x20 crew. We're also on Instagram at 20x20 crew. And uh, we're still looking for your, uh, for for YouTube subscriptions. Yes, we we're we're the giveaway is still on. I got stuff I'm trying to get giveaway, and, and I guess nobody wants it. Uh, well, we're <laughs> get we're getting there. We're getting there. But uh, yeah, so we're doing this giveaway. We're only asking for 50 YouTube subscribers. That's all we're asking. We know we know we're small time. Neither, neither one of our heads are, are big. Not, not in the way of egos, anyway. Yeah, I have a naturally large head, but I'm a large guy. That's something completely different, folks. <laughs> That's for after hours. <laughs> That's for after hours. But yes, we're looking for YouTube uh, subscribers. We have a giveaway. We're looking for 50 subscribers. We're about a third of the way there. Look us up on YouTube. And just search for official 20x20 crew, and we'll pop up. Or you can visit our website 20x20crew.com. And uh, there's a link there to yes. our YouTube page. Uh, everything is there, including our brand new exclusive YouTube exclusive content called The Following Contest, where we fantasy book matches that we've all, always wanted to see and we hope you would want to see. Until next week, we got a lot of fucking wrestling to watch. Yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> no, yeah, we, we, there's no time for rest. I'm, I'm going to be hungover from Dominion, let me tell you. As always, the reason why we did all this is to hashtag support professional wrestling. Hashtag support the heels. Hashtag support the baby faces. And until next week, we will see see you in in the the ring. ring.